Combat operations were carried out by units from the forces and assets of the Ukrainian Navy, in cooperation with other components of the defense forces. The defense forces attacked a weapons and military equipment storage facility near the Russian city of Kursk. This was reported by the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine on July 31. Enemy air defense activity and explosions were observed at the aiming points, the report says. It was noted that combat operations were carried out by units from the forces and assets of the Ukrainian Navy in cooperation with other components of the defense forces. Detailed information on the result of the defeat is being clarified. Ukrainian soldiers will continue to take all possible legal measures to stop the armed aggression of the Russian Federation against our people, the general staff added. Earlier, Russia reported a fire at one of the facilities in the Kursk region as a result of a drone attack. At the same time, local authorities admitted that the alarm signal did not go off. And the day before, the general staff reported a strike on an oil depot in the Kursk region. A fire broke out at the Russian facility. The Israeli army struck the Lebanese capital Beirut on Tuesday, days after a Hezbollah attack on a village in the Golan Heights that killed a dozen youngsters. The strike took place in the Dahi neighborhood of Beirut, which is known as the Iran-affiliated Hezbollah militant group Stronghold, and came a day after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed a severe response to the Golan Heights attack over the weekend. According to Israeli telegram channel Voice of Israel, Haja Mohsen the deputy head of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, as well as several of his associates, were killed in the Israeli attack. The United States previously placed a $5 million bounty on Mohsen's head due to attacks on the country's army. The U.S. had reportedly urged Israel to avoid the Lebanese capital and civilian infrastructure to avoid causing collateral damage. Hey, yalla, albese, albese. Shabab, kaza bush dahi, kaza fob dahi, shara ashura. A prominent Russian propagandist has become the latest pro-Putin figurehead to express a desire for Alaska to be under Russian control again, raising fears that the country could make a land grab for the US state. Presenter of Russia One program 60 Minutes and Putin mouthpiece Olga Skabayeva referred to the US state as our Alaska during a broadcast. Newsweek says that Alaska once belonged to Russia. In 1867, it was sold to the U.S. after then-President Andrew Johnson signed the Alaska Treaty. It gained the status of a state on January 3, 1959. Alaska and Russia are positioned about 53 miles apart at their closest point. Skabayeva made the remarks after fellow pundit Adalbi Shkargoshev, a deputy of Russia's parliament, the State Duma, commented on a joint patrol staged by Russia and China last week that came within 200 miles of the Alaskan coast. Russian Tu-95Ms and Chinese H-6K strategic bombers, alongside escorting Russian Su-30SM and Su-35S jets, operated together over the North Pacific Ocean and the Bering Sea. It marked the first time the two countries had been intercepted while operating together. Our aircraft approached the borders of Alaska, Shkagoshev said of the joint patrol before he was interrupted by Skabayeva, 
who incorrectly said that the state Duma deputy had said, Our Alaska. She added, right now the head of the Pentagon is hiccuping nervously somewhere. You said our Alaska. And he just said that if Russian and Chinese planes penetrate the territory that the US considers its own, the US is ready to enter the war. State TV propagandists, including Skabayeva, have even floated the idea of either striking or seizing the territory of NATO members during Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Moscow has accused the West of being complicit in the war by providing Kyiv with military aid, weapons and equipment to fend off Russian forces. In January, the US State Department responded to a Kremlin decree following claims that Putin gave Russia grounds to reclaim Alaska. The Kremlin signed a decree regarding historic Russian real estate holdings abroad, directing and funding the presidential administration and the foreign ministry in searching for real estate in the Russian Federation, the former Russian Empire, the former USSR. Then referring to the proper registration of rights and legal protection of this property, Newsweek previously reported.